Arjun is in a miserable position. That is not the position of Arjun, the person. That is the situation of entire mankind. That is the conflict that we all face daily, every day. So first of all, it is not about Arjun and Krishna. It is not about two persons. Arjun and Krishna are both within us. Krishna is not standing in front of Arjun. Krishna is the heart of Arjun. If you have none of these, then you do not have a future. What are you worried about? If you have no money, no wife, or a very small family, or very little material at your possession, then do you have a future? <coughs> what is meant by future? Something that carries forward from today into tomorrow. You have so little that is carrying forward. You don't have any worries. What are you worried about? Those who have a lot have to exist till tomorrow to protect what they have. They not only have stuff, they also have worries related to stuff. The one who has nothing has nothing to care about, nothing to worry about. Or are you just worrying in imitation of others? Because it is fashionable to worry. So let me worry as well. You are free. You are blessed. Okay, I, I, I liked what you said in the yellow pamphlet about um, a lot of our anxiety being uh, due to imagination. So that was good. Uh, and even imagination requires stuff. You cannot imagine with nothing at the center. That which you are, the true self, is not a thing, is not material. So it cannot be at the center of imaginative worries or worried imagination. At the center of worries are things that can be lost to time. Future means time. If you have very little stuff that time can take away, then what are your worries founded on? Take care of today and that's sufficient. Somebody is extremely happy with you. He has not saddled you with unnecessary burden. <laughs> Usually it's the other way around. People who have a lot, they come to me talking about how what they have is now clinging to them which is the other way around always they are clinging to what they supposedly have but they would say we have a lot and now there is a lot of clinging and a lot of concern about security and future rarely does it happen that someone comes and says I do not have much so I am worrying about future <laughs> you are taking totally needless worry upon yourself. Roam like a child upon the earth. Wander free. Fly without a bother. There is nothing to hold you or chain you. You are blessed. You remember that little story from the Sermon on the Mount? So Jesus is walking with his bunch and they look at little 
lily flowers and jesus pauses and he turns to the chaps and says you know what these flowers they have more splendor than the kingdom of solomon and do you know why they dance and smile and exuberate like this why because they worry not about tomorrow the king has to take care of so much how can he rest in peace these flowers they delight in their little present and the fact of their life is that they won't be there tomorrow a flower is such a delicate thing everything that is beautiful is also delicate what do you want to be a rock that lasts through time but it's just a rock hmm not dancing not smiling not getting wet in the rains or a flower that lives a couple of hours or a couple of days or a couple of weeks and really lives how do you want it to be you have choice i know that i have a power to just stop this imagination or shift turn my attention to you have direction. the power to stop this imagination my wonder is how do you imagine when you really do not have even material stuff to found your imagination upon if i have 20 cars i have material stuff and my imagination will be built around that i have something on which to weave my dreams if you don't have 20 cars what are you imagining about others cars you are worried about their future the future of the planet earth the future of the species going extinct what is it that bothers you are you asking me of course because <laughs> you are worried <laughs> Uh oh I, I I only want to say that my imagination is powerful I can dream up can Yes dream but up you anything. must question the center the stuff of imagination does it really exist Does it really exist Then how can we do that sir By asking does it really exist You see so you could It was declared Hmm? that the kingdom is being attacked by a hostile army and the beggar got a cardiac arrest he said now all my riches would be plundered away that which you are imagining as threatened does it really exist the rule of thumb is if it can be plundered away it if it can be threatened with destruction it really does not exist question the existence of that which is in danger of slipping away into non existence but every material thing is in danger if you have a car it can go if you have a house it can go If you have a wife, son, they all will go. So, sir, what's the point then? The point what is, do, do you want to live in sorrow? The point is, do you want to lose your peace by considering foreign stuff as yours? You know it doesn't belong to you. You know that it would be taken away, and yet you are getting associated and attached to it. at your own peril you are inviting trouble don't you love relaxation don't you have something for your peace sir but we uh, do love enjoying those things also then you have to make a choice do you love the titillation of the moment 
and the long sorrow that follows it you have to decide is it there or not and you have to be very forthright and honest about it spirituality is only for those who are fed up of their sorrow if you are still uncertain about sorrow then you need to experience more sorrow that's your punishment spirituality begins when you say enough of it i am not meant to be buffeted by waves of alternating pleasure and sorrow hmm one has to be totally fed up if still a green corner exists in your mind if you still have uncertainty about whether or not you are living rightly then you won't be able to go through the exacting spiritual discipline hmm that liberation demands then you will start and lose your way the question is do you eat the bread that you have in front of you today or today do you consume bread a week in advance how much can you eat today how much can you eat today and you require only as much as you want to eat today if you have more food you will have to just carry it along it may even get stale who knows getting it are we really worried about basic material sustenance if that be the case kindly go ahead and slog work as hard as possible but tell me please honestly are we worried about bread alone is it our basic physical wants that torment us no the hunger the thirst are not in the stomach they are in the mind if you were dealing with genuine prop poverty poverty of the nature where even bread is deprived to the person then i would say fight for bread because if you aren't full in the stomach then there is no way even this can happen as i speak to you i have this glass in front of me if that were the case hmm that actual and absolute poverty were staring you in the face then i would dismiss this gathering and say let each of us first go and earn our morsels but that is not the case look around yourself man is not really starving i repeat in the stomach man is starving in the mind in fact man is the only species that is overweight and obese and is still thinking about food are you really deprived of bread it's a question you must honestly ask you know very well that you won't starve it is the mind that is not coming to rest we are psychologically at war with our neighbor we want money not just to consume but to defend ourselves against the world psychologically that defense is not needed you need money for mental aggrandizement you need money to internally feel secure you don't need money merely to have bread maybe 1% 5% 10% of your money goes towards your daily bread but look at the kind of sums people accumulate is it just to eat and wear clothes and have a roof over the head no not at all it is to compensate for the lack of love and god in their life people want money because they don't have love people want more and more money because they don't have god and that is why 
दिस सर्च इज फ्यूटाइल येस ऑफकोर्स एवरी एनिमल द डॉग ऑन द स्ट्रीट द फिश इन द वॉटर दे ऑल लुक फॉर देयर डेली मील्स मैन मस्ट ऑल्सो डू दैट बट वी आंट रियली लुकिंग फॉर मील्स वी आर लुकिंग फॉर समथिंग एल्स थ्रू मनी and that which we are looking for through money can never be obtained through money that is why man keeps accumulating more and more money and is yet never satisfied it's like wanting the sky and running very hard on the earth you can run as hard as possible you will never reach the sky more money will never give you that which you really want through money you see <laughs> mankind as a whole today is more prosperous than it has been ever in its history and i'm not talking about only the developed countries except for a handful of places on the earth nowhere is man starving and man's wealth as an aggregate is only growing continuously we were never as well fed as we are today we never had as much social security as we have today the quantum of material that man has today he never never had before and yet man is mentally starved I can say from my own experience even just coming to India in only in the last few days I have been making progress in recognizing when my imagination is running it's almost like taking what I thought was real and going no that's imaginary and I'm happy about that that happens when you love joy a lot huh you must love joy so much that even a slight departure towards stress or tension should activate an inner alarm all these imaginations that take you away from your natural joy the moment they arise you must start feeling restless you must start feeling as if distanced from your own soul as if you are getting divorced from your love and then you must quickly return you must say ah no i don't want this we must love ourselves a lot only then will we disallow our support to our own suffering we support our suffering so much how will anything else ever come to us Don't you think imaginings lead to creation? No, not at all. Because you can imagine only within the stuff of the known. Your imagination can never go into the unknowable possibilities of life. Can you imagine yourself if you are an English speaker? Can you imagine yourself speaking Sanskrit? You can't. No, Tell I'm me what are you imagining? What are you saying in Sanskrit? Well, what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about imagining a plane. No, This is not. I'm not talking of plane. I'm saying when you imagine, you imagine within the limitations of the known. Imaginations, intuitions, dreams, mm -hmm. they all base themselves only upon that which is already known to you. but creativity is based on what is known creativity is a leap into the unknown if it is based on the known it is not creativity it is merely a reconfiguration it, yes it's a reconfiguration and reconfigurations won't help reconfiguration is like getting a new haircut hairstyle will it change the interiors creativity is when a lot arises from nowhere 
creativity is when something springs up without a past 